Solid geometry often needs to be created between two faces or sketches that have dissimilar geometry. This could mean connecting a round profile to a profile with sharp edges, like connecting a circle to a rectangle. Or in the case of this air conditioner hose, the geometry of the nozzle at the end needs to be created by connecting a circular profile to a slot profile. The loft tool is specifically designed to create solid geometry between these different profiles. Let's dive into using the loft tool and seeing how to create the nozzle on the hose. The loft feature is found here in the toolbar between the sweep and thicken tools. I'll begin by selecting it and I'll walk you through the steps to create the feature, as well as the available options here in the dialog. In order to create a loft feature, at least two profiles must be selected to create the solid geometry. More than two profiles can be used for a more complex shape, if desired. However, if more than two profiles are selected, the order in which they're selected is important and will change the loft geometry. If I select the circular face of the outer sleeve as the first profile, and then I select the rectangular face of the sketch as the second profile, a loft is created between the two. However, the shape that is created might not be what you expected. There is an element of twist between these two profiles indicated by the lines that connect from each corner of the rectangle back to the circle. Whenever the two profiles have different amounts of vertices, in this case a circle with zero vertices and a rectangle with four vertices, onshape approximates the desired shape automatically. To improve the shape of the loft, the profile with less vertices can be cut into segments using the split tool, which will give the same number of vertices for each profile. This means I need to split up the circular face into four segments. To create these segments, I'll first hide the hose and create a new sketch on the front face of the nozzle. I'll convert the circular edge of the face by selecting the circular edge and then selecting the Use tool. Now, if I select the Split tool from the drop down menu next to the Trim tool, I can split the circular profile into four segments which matches the same number of vertices as the rectangle. Now I'll exit the sketch, re-enable the loft tool, and this time I'll select the circular sketch from the features list instead of the circular face in the graphics area. Now the loft's twist has been eliminated and Onshape has produced much more predictable solid geometry. To create the nozzle shape, I want to connect the circular profile to the outer slot profile. As you'll see in a bit, this causes an error in the tool, which derives from having nested contours. In other words, the profiles used for the loft cannot contain other contours within them. If I clear the rectangular profile from the loft dialog, and then select the sketch for the slot in the features list, the preview disappears and the loft is shown in red in the features list. This indicates that there's a problem creating the loft geometry. The sketch contains three different contours within the slot shape, a rectangle and two semicircles, which are causing the feature to fail. This means I need to reduce the slot profile down to one contour. I'll do this by exiting the loft tool, then editing the slot sketch and changing the horizontal lines of the rectangle to construction geometry. Now when I re-enable the loft tool and select both sketches from the features list as the loft profiles, the loft appears in the graphics area, creating valid solid geometry. At this point, I'd like to show you how to better control the loft geometry to produce a more refined shape. You may have noticed the two options, add guides and match vertices in the dialog box which can be used to control the loft contour between the two profiles. Guide curves are sketches created by the user and control the outer contour of the loft along that curve. The match vertices option selects one point from each profile and assigns them to be aligned. I'll quickly go through this second option and then come back to adding guide curves. To match vertices on the profiles, I need to select one vertex on each. On a related note, selecting multiple vertices on profiles causes the feature to fail. For this loft, I can select the bottom right vertex on each profile. And the loft updates with a different contour. 
this is not the geometry I want for the nozzle, so I'll uncheck this option for now and use guide curves to control this loft. As I mentioned a moment ago, guide curves are created by the user and define the outer contour of the loft along that curve. I've already created some guide curves that I can use to define the loft shape, which I'll show in the model. These curves are splines used to create a specific curvature along each side of the nozzle, as well as tangency to the existing circular face. Because splines are curvature continuous and have tangency along the curve, they work well as guide curves. Other sketch entities could be used if desired. However, each segment of the sketch must have tangent transitions in order for the guide curve to work properly. I'll select the guide curve on the right first. And the contour of the feature updates to match this curve. I can continue selecting the other guide curves to update the loft. First the one on the left, then the one on the bottom. However, when I select the curve along the top, the feature fails and the preview disappears. If I take a closer look, I can see that the end point of this guide curve isn't connected to the circular profile. This is an extremely important aspect of creating guide curves. The end points of the guide curves must be coincident or must pierce each profile that it connects. I'll reconnect this guide curve back to the circular profile so that it can be used in the loft. I'll exit out and edit the sketch for the guide curve. I'll make the points coincident again by selecting both of them and clicking on the coincident constraint. Now I can use this curve in the loft. I'll enable the tool, select the circular sketch and the slot sketch as the profiles. Enable the guide curves option. Make sure the guide curve sketches are showing in the model. And now I can select all four guide curves. I'll make sure that this loft is being merged with the cylindrical geometry and click the green check. Now the loft has much more refined contours that align with the guide curves. Because these guide curves can be edited at any time, the loft feature becomes flexible and can be easily adjusted. I've already created the nozzle in its final form, so I'll suppress the loft I just created. And then roll to the end of the features list. This loft feature has been shelled out and had a flange added to the end, allowing the nozzle to be mounted to an outlet. By using the loft feature, I was able to connect these two dissimilar profiles, which gives the nozzle its unique shape. This feature allowed for the circular cross section of the hose to connect to a slot shaped outlet. The shape of the nozzle was further refined by including guide curves, giving it the exact curvature desired to transition between the two profiles.